What's up Divas and what's up Divos? It's your girl April and you already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday. So of course I'm back and I am back still rocking my Nubian hair or excuse me NubianBar.com kinky straight hair. So yes honeys, yes I'm loving this hair. I'm like absolutely floored and amazed by it. Like on some realness. Mm-hmm. So, I decided to do this video with just natural sunlight because it is damn hot. And sometimes those um, regular lights be kind of like washing me out. So, if you see me kind of like looking away right now and uh, lighting changing, I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm just trying to fix it on my computer through the camera to make it a little bit brighter. So, I don't want to be too bright. So, yeah, there I go. That's better. So, anyway. Oh. Okay, that's a little bit not better. I think I hit the thing too much. Okay. That's better. Right? Like, yeah. Okay, so anyway, like I was saying, I am still rocking my kinky straight hair from Nubian Bar, which I absolutely love. Like, seriously, on surrealness, this hair is the shit. Okay? It's the shit. All the way around, it's the shit. And I should not be saying nothing like that, those bad curse words, being that I have on one of my favorite t-shirts, which I am so bummed about because this company sent me this shirt, this whole entire outfit, and some other stuff, and I never was able to introduce it on the video camera. So if you sent me this shirt, please know that I'm thankful to you. And if you're watching, please put your website below. But I love this shirt. It says, Lady of the Lord with Kisses. And on the back of the shirt, it's a scripture. Um, you guys can see that. And I have like these matching yoga pants, which have like Lady of the Lord on the leg going down. Oh my God. And every time I wear this outfit, people are like, oh my God, I love your outfit. Where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? And a matching black tank top I also have. And it says the same thing. And it looks identical, but it's just a matching black tank top. It's a little bit too big. Um, so... I had to wear it under with another tank top underneath it, but I love this outfit. It is so comfortable. So I've worn this quite a few times. So, mm -hmm. yes. So other than that, there is really nothing new that I can remember um, except for Miguel has my car and he is bringing it to emissions in Arizona to get it inspected. That's what they call it out here. And he works on my car. And Miguel is just amazing. Like, amazing so he has his own shop in his house behind his house whatever and he always works on my car like so affordable like just so damn affordable till it's ridiculous um and i have been ripped off enough by car places up here and when i was introduced to miguel i've never let anyone else touch my car so he has my car and he took it to emissions for me to get an inspector because the check engine light was on and he knew how to take care of that. So, if you live in Arizona, in the Phoenix area in Arizona, and you need a really good mechanic who is reliable, affordable, trustworthy, leave your information below and just say you need Miguel's number and I will give you his number because... He is like heaven sent. And that's all he does. He works on cars all day long and he has loads of cars. His backyard is like nothing but a shop. Like seriously, a shop. And of course, you know, he is Hispanic. He is Mexican. And I just love them. They are such hardworking people. So I really, really, really appreciate his hard work. So anyway, other than that, um, yeah, the makeup look that I have on is so simple because I was in such a rush today to get out the door and I really didn't have any time. So yeah, really, really simple. Also, I made my very first bob wig. Well, it's my first, but it's my second. This time it turned out so bomb ass, like OMG, so bomb ass. But so the video for that will be up this week. It's hair by Silhouette Lanes, which their hair is so flowy. It's gorgeous. The wig is absolutely gorgeous um and i actually cut it really well it took me like an hour almost but yes now if you girls know i'm really not one for bob my daughter said that the bob looks so good on me and i'm really not one for bob so of course she will be up for sale on my website so in case you're interested there will be the bob up for sale as well as another kinky straight unit um, which is dark colored, not this, not this one, mm -mm, honey, it's not this one, but I will have that up, and I'm trying to get this other one finished, I have to go get some toner for it today, so that I can put that one up, and then, um, this other one I'm working on, so yes, um, 
other than that, let's get into this video because I want to get it done. And of course, you know I'm already drinking. Mm -hmm. This is peach flavored vodka by Amsterdam and some orange juice. Nothing, and some ice. Nothing like fancy. So this one here, huh? Oh, yes. If you want a Real Talk episode about yourself or your family members or someone you know, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line Real Talk. As well as that is if you want to change the name of yourself or characters in the email, please let me know that you have done so in the beginning of the email. Like I've just changed the names or blah, blah. And that way I can, you know, post your video up and do a response to it. So other than that, let's get on to the video. Hmm. So, oh, and yeah, I know I'm like, oh, and yeah. So, yeah, my daughter's birthday is coming up on the 19th of April. Tinky Man's mommy, which is my grandson, Tinky Man, you know, the one that's always on Instagram with me. My daughter, she will be 20 years old this April 19th, which I'm super excited about for her. So she's like a huge makeup lover, just like myself. So I'm helping her build her collection and I have like loads of makeup. So I'm just packing it up and giving her like a lot of stuff. So we went to Ikea, we got her the matching desk like I have, but she got a dark color one. And I surprised her from Tinky Man, from her son, with a $100 gift certificate from Morphe Brushes. So for those of you who have been asking me about Morphe Brushes, their makeup is amazing. Like the payoff is intense and it's so worth it, especially the price point is so low and the makeup is so, so worth it. Like, I really, really, really am like digging their makeup and their brushes, but mainly the makeup is like amazing, like amazing. And that's all I basically have on today is the Morphe. So yes, that's what I wanted to share with you. The Morphe is so worth it. Okay, so now let's get into the video. April, you can call me Yolanda. This issue may seem elementary, but here it goes. I work on a job with people where my life revolves around them. I go to work, I'm cordial to everyone, both men and women, and just keep it business. I learn it's better this way because all my business will be gossiped about. I take public transportation with these women and also work with them. They are so bold and make it obvious that they are talking about me. For example, what I have on, why I do my natural, how I do my natural hair, why I have on that color lipstick, mm, looks like girl has a new outfit, she thinks she's all that, and etc. Black women are doing this, just the black women. The black men on the job talk about me, but in a perverted way. For example, mm, I like that neckline, you got some juicy lips, you got some big boobs, and etc. I'm sick of it. The white men and women on my job are so respectful to me. I get along great with them and don't deal with this harassment from them. But other people, I'm sick of it. And these are people of a certain age and, and are acting childish. Friends say, oh, Yolanda, just ignore them and don't, and don't, and don't, and don't pay them no mind. Yeah, that's easier said than done. I have to work with these people. I have a very hot temper and many times I've had to hold myself back because of my temper. It's so bad, like disturbing a sleeping lion. These bitches would sometimes come around and say, hey girl, what's going on? Knowing full well they just finished talking about me. What is your take on this? Any advice would be helpful. Damn. Well, so Yolanda works at a job and mainly um, she keeps to herself and that's the number one key. You know something, when I was working in the medical insurance field, I worked there for nine years and I had one so-called friend associate, we was friends. Other than that, I really didn't bother with anyone, but we were friends before I started working there. Um, other than that, I did not bother with anybody. As she said, I was cordial to them, you know, I was respectful. I would carry on a conversation, of course, like, hey, how you doing, you know. I don't really need you to know about my fucking business and I don't really want to know about your business because I just want to drop off my shit and get the fuck up out of here. Because I didn't have to work in the office, I would come in and drop stuff off. I'd have my own little office and I would fix my paperwork up and I would leave so I wasn't there like that. But I was not trying to sit there and have a full-blown conversation with these people neither. Because we work friends. We not even work friends, we work associates. After 5 o'clock, I don't fucking know your ass, okay? If I see you on the weekend and I'm out shopping, it's, hey, how you doing? And that's it. And I've seen plenty of them out on the weekend. 
We didn't engage in conversation. We stopped and said, hey, how you doing? Well, I'll see you at work. Have a great weekend. That's it. Because, bitch, I don't really know you on the weekend and after five. And, bitch, you don't really know me, nor you do you want to after five. Okay? So, it is best to keep your work relationships cordial because it's work. You didn't go there to make no friends, okay, or no relationships. You went there to get a paycheck. And that's bottom line. A paycheck and that's it. Not no friendships. Now, here's the thing. I have had other friends who, not even friends, but associates or so-called, same situation, same scenario at the workplace too. Like I said, I was there nine years. New marketing staff came in. I was senior VP. These were younger people. And when I say younger people, listen, I'm 42, about to be 42. When I started working that job, that was in 2011 or 12 something like that so i was in my very late 30s but the people that they brought in were in their early 20s now you know you get these young little black bitches because they were the young black bitches okay that would stare me and my co-worker who i was friends with prior to the working in you know you give me the shady look roll your motherfucking eyes like them shit's about to pop the fuck out okay you get shit like that you get, I've had, I've had had one encounter with a male co-worker where I had to let him know, listen, back the fuck off, okay? Because you just run your mouth too much. No explicitness towards me because I think they kind of knew what type of person I was. Like, just leave her the fuck alone because she doesn't come in here smiling all the time. Just leave that bitch the fuck alone. But, work is for work. You go to work to make a paycheck. Because I never went to work for anything less than to make a paycheck. I don't really want to hang out with anybody after work. I don't want to go to the club, to the bar with none of my co-workers. Because it's work. It's cool to make friends if you can find yourself one good friend from your place of business. But here's the thing. And I'm sorry to say this, Yolanda. But some black bitches can be so fucking catty and yes i said black bitches because y'all know y'all fucking catty as a motherfucker okay y'all is catty trust me i know this i've had issues with friends and co-workers who i thought was my friends or whatever and i you know what i'm saying just the whole bullshit social media shit you could see i could read through the motherfucking lines okay so it'd be on some shady shit women are the worst that's why i don't have too many women friends. Too many female friends. I cannot deal with them. I don't have any male friends either. Fuck it. I don't really have too many friends in general. My daughter, who's 20 years old, she is my best friend. My son, who's 17 years old, he is like my best friend. My kids are my best friend. My family is my everything. I have one other best friend. Her name is Nicole, and she lives up here. We don't see each other as much. She live in the same, like, in the same distance, like, within a half a mile from me. But she works. She's at work all day, and she have her own life. So, but we are still the best of friends. And she called me a bitch. What you doing? Bitch, I'm doing this. This is us. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't on no shit like that. But I'm going to tell you this. Females are the worst. You cannot have too many female friends because... Them bitches are fucking catty. Women in general is catty. So when you go into the workplace and they shading you, because that's what the fuck I do. I call it shade. Put on the motherfucking glasses, okay, and just be like, mm. Now, this is what I do for bitches, okay, that be shading me. Because I just got shaded at motherfucking Sam's Club, okay? When a bitch roll her eyes at me and shit, you know what I do? Psh, yeah, okay, keep it going. And that's all I do. I had to do the bitch like this at fucking Sam's Club. And it, this is off topic because this has nothing to do with um, what she's talking about. But I'm at Sam's Club, me and my daughter, she won a big bag of chicken wings for 20 bucks. Nobody was at the chicken wing freezer but me and Tati. I said, go find the guy because the Pacquiao fight was on, so there was no party wings. We didn't want them for that. We just wanted them. I said, go find someone that works here. He came and he looked. He said, okay. He kept looking. A bunch of other people showed up. Like this black lady and her black daughter who had to be like in her late 20s, she showed up. And um, when she walked up on me, she kind of shaded me from the start. And I had to shade her because I just really wanted to say, bitch, did you just roll out the motherfucking garbage can truck? Because you look like you haven't washed. Go wash your clothes and do something with your fucking hair. A lot of these females up here in Arizona just have no coof. Either way, whatever, pay no mind. The like seven, eight other people showed up looking in a 
deep freezer. Me and Tati are talking to the Sam's Club guy. And he was like, I'm going to go look in the back and see if there's any. How many bags do you need? She just need one bag. The bag is huge. It's just her and Tinky Man. He comes back. He says, I got to go get them out of somewhere in their warehouse. It's going to take me like 20 minutes. I got to get a forklift. Okay. I said, we'll come back. We walk off. He said, we got a bunch of them. I'm going to bring them. So as I'm walking off, the black bitch that already shaded me, she like, mm, people are so fucking rude. She could at least told him that we was waiting for chicken wings too. As I'm walking off, I turned around. I was like, what? First of all, I ain't your motherfucking chicken wings spokesperson. You heard him speak up for yourself. She ain't say nothing. She left it at that. That was it. My daughter is like, oh, we don't want to get thrown out of Sam's Club today now, do we? Because this mother and daughter here and you with your mama. Now, girl, please don't get it popping. Don't get it popping because it's Sam's Club. But bitch, you don't really fucking know me, okay? And like I said to her after Tati said what she said, I said, you don't really know. And I don't think you want me to go there on you. Because all I got to do is run my fucking mouth and say a couple words of what you look like and how you should look and your dirty ass. And you go home crying to whoever, okay? So she shaded me when I came back through the aisle to see if the chicken wings was put back out. Because them bitches were standing there. I'm not standing in the chicken wing aisle for 20 minutes waiting for no motherfucking chicken wings to be brought. Okay? We continued on shopping. I love Sam's Club because they got some good ass samples. I come back through. Me and Tinky Man, he walking. I'm holding his hand. All of that. Like, bitch, is there something wrong with you? Is there something in your fucking teeth? I just looked at her and I was like, yeah, okay, keep it going. And laughed it off. Because if you can take the time to fucking shave me and fucking roll your eyes and talk shit about me, bitch, keep on fucking talking. Just like I mean, Yolanda. These bitches that talk about your lipstick, your hair, your fucking titties, your shoes, whatever the fuck it is. Why is it that these type of bitches is always paying you so much attention? And the funny thing about it is they have the audacity to say, yeah, she thinks she's all that. No, bitch, you think I'm all that because you're constantly running your motherfucking mouth about me. Obviously, I must be all that if you keep fucking noticing what the fuck I got on, how I did my hair today, what color my fucking lips are, what color my shoes are, and how many inches the motherfucking heels are, how I wore my jacket and threw it around my fucking shoulder when I left out, and what type of Jimmy Choo bag or fucking Gucci Prada purse I got on to fucking day. Okay? No, bitch. You think I'm all that. Because obviously, if you didn't, you wouldn't be paying me so much fucking mind. Now, like I said, black women can be so fucking catty and bitchy to one another. And it's so fucking sad and ridiculous. Because we are the same color. Though the black, the, although the black bitch in Sam's Club was dark skin and she saw my light skin ass, she must have thought that for one, that I was not of my age, which is damn near 42. And for two, the bitch probably thought I was fucking either white or half and half like everybody else does. And it's so fucked up because these type of people always get it screwed up. Like, they feel like, oh, because you might think that I'm not black or you might think that I'm of another race that you're going to intimidate and scare me. It don't matter what fucking color you are. You can get your ass kicked, okay? You can get your ass kicked. So don't think because you black that you're going to bully somebody that's a Hispanic or a white person or whatever. Because you, you motherfucking Negro, could get your ass kicked by either one of these races. Either way, the bitch was out of pocket. Now, these bitches at your job, they totally out of pocket. And it is very well said and done to just ignore these bitches. But you know what? Let me tell you something. When they come around your fucking desk and you know that they've been talking about you. And this is something I learned from my daughter who is 13. Because she's very blunt and verbal. No filter at all. Speak your motherfucking mind. And I'm going to give you a good scenario. My daughter Nay was in school and they was all at assembly. You know, um, you know, it was her, her friend Sarah, and these other two girls. Sarah had to go up on stage and give a speech. So Sarah went up on stage, and as soon as Sarah went up on stage, these two little clack cackling heifers started talking about her, saying how she was overweight, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which she's not, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when she got off the stage, Nay, my daughter just sat there and listened to all of it. When she got off the stage, she came back. They was in a little crowd, whatever, talking, and you know they said what they said to Sarah. Oh, we like your little speech. Then my daughter come out her face and was like, I don't know why y'all was standing up there for talking about how y'all like her speech. You was talking about her, talking about how she fat. You know what you said. She's very verbal, okay? Very blunt. And I appreciate that with her because 
don't front. Don't fake the front. Don't front for nobody. So with these bitches at your job, you know, and if you know these bitches is talking about you, mm, the next time they come around your desk, your cubicle, whatever, hey, girl, what you doing? What I'm doing is my work. What you need to be doing is your work. Girl, don't come over here act like you my best friend when I know you over there talking mess about me. Don't use no curse words because you at work. And don't be loud and vulgar because you at work. Basically just say, girl, I'm working just like you should be doing working. And I would appreciate it if you don't come over here to my area and act like you my friend. Because I know you and your other co-workers that you hang out with be up there sizing me up and talking about me. So yes, girl, have a nice day. Trust me, I've had to do that to plenty of people. And when you say some shit like that to motherfuckers, they just be like, what the fuck you gonna say? What can you say? I wasn't talking about you, bitch, please. Get your fucking ass out of my cubicle for you be a part of it. Get your ass and go ahead. Bye, Felicia. Bye. Okay? I'm telling you, Londa, you need to put it in perspective just like that with them cackling ass bitches. Females are the worst. And as for the men at your job, well, that's basically sexual harassment. And there's no way that I would be putting up with that. I wouldn't even combat with them. What I would be doing is taking my ass to HR for these, these men. Because the things that is coming out of their mouths is highly inappropriate. This is work. This is not appropriate at work. Talking about your titties, your neckline, your lips. That is sexual harassment. And I would let them know the next time one of them says something perverted to me, you want to keep your job or you lose it? Because the next time you come out of pocket and say something like that to me, I will make sure to make it a point to take your ass to freaking HR. And you can say ass and all because what is he going to do? Go back and tell somebody? Well, you know, Yolanda just cursed at me because I told her her titties look good. Really? Let his ass know. And I bet you they will leave it at that. It's sad to say that the white people at your job is more respectful to you. It be like that. It be like that in a lot of places. The business that I worked at, it was like that too. The white folks that was there, they were so much nicer to me and so much more respectful. But the young little black bitches, they always was cutting their fucking eyes, saying some shit until you had to let them know. Bitch, just because I'm motherfucking light-skinned don't mean that I won't kick your fucking black ass, okay? First of all, I earn my respect. I've been here for nine motherfucking years. And, bitch, I'm older than you, okay? I earn much respect. So watch yourself. That's what I would do. Let them bitches know what time it is. And if they out in public and they side-eyeing you, you know what you should do? Because I love when bitches throw shade on me and, and be looking me up and down. You like what you see? Oh, you like these? Mm -hmm. And just do that and walk off. Bitches don't like that shit. But you know what? You got to feed them, spoon feed they ass with their own fucking medicine. But as for the men, I would highly let them know. Next time you come out of your mouth and say some type of perverted shit to me, I'm going to make sure to take your ass to freaking HR. If you want to keep your job, I would suggest that you cut it out right now. And that's all you got to say. I guarantee you the motherfucking Negroes will shut their fucking mouth. Men think that that shit is cute. And some women... Go for it. And the fucked up thing is that they do it to the other woman at your job, whether you know it or not. So they are key, key, key and think it's cute. Well, some women think that shit is cute for men to say you got some nice titties or some juicy lips. That shit ain't cute. It's a form of disrespect, Negro. But some women just think that shit is cute. Just like some women like to go outside with all their ass out and think that that shit is cute and they going to pull men. You are going to pull a whole lot of men. But is it the men that you really want? So take my advice, Yolanda, and let them bitches have it, but be a classy way. And let them motherfucking Negroes know. Watch yourself, because you're not going to keep talking nasty and dirty thoughts to me. Mm -hmm. So let, let Yolanda know what you think. So on to the next one. So, my name is China, and I started dating this guy, Tay, last June. Things were great in the beginning, and he is, is a really sweet guy. However, he, like most other men, has fuckboy tendencies. I ain't never heard of fuckboy tendencies, but we about to find out what that is. Uh, then again, I might do. My older sister lives right upstairs from me in the same apartment building, and purposely intervened on our relationship, which pushed Tay... To the point of cheating. Or at least that's his excuse. I know my sister. And I know she was just looking out for me and my kids. She was seeing. She was being concerning. She she was seeing concerning behavior in Tay. So of course she wanted to protect us. 
But my sister has also been known to be a petty bitch too. Tay holds it against me that I didn't do anything about my sister. He is in a rough spot in life. He lost his job about two months into our relationship. And because of his record, he's having trouble getting another job. Court dates back to back. And since I have kids, he probably feels emasculated because I'm the breadwinner. So I can imagine my sister and her opinions probably didn't help the situation. Now, as far as the cheating, he started talking to this girl, Drea, a.k.a. Future, in September last year and basically hid her from me till New Year's Eve. He claims he was just trying to find the right time to tell me about her, but I found out through another bitch he cheated on me with named Lala. Lala came to me directly, no drama, and told me about her and Future. Oh, Come to find out, Tay was already in a relationship with Future. So he technically cheated on both of us with Lala. Shaking my head. Needless to say, I threw all his shit out. I don't get it. I have my own place, car, great job, and two kids. Future ass, that bitch, was staying in a hotel. And I make more than her. The only thing she has on me is she doesn't have children. Future so intimidated by me, the bitch was bold enough to get an apartment in the building right next to mine, trying to prove a point. And of course, he moved right out of my apartment into hers, but he still comes over every chance he gets, shaking my head. Now, I know I sound crazy for still wanting to be with this man, but I really do genuinely love him with everything in me, and I might be making excuses for his behavior as a grown-ass man, but I also know hard times can drive you to make irrational decisions. He told me it fucks with him because he is what he wants. Because he told me it fucks with him because she is what he wants. But I'm what he needs because I motivate him to do better and support him. And I support him. But what do you think? Help. I'm so stressed out. Did this bitch China just write me this bullshit about her boyfriend that was living with her named Tay? He's a fuckboy. Um, yeah, and I know what that means. He got fuckboy tendencies. I know exactly what that means. Living with her, lost his job after two months out of the relationship. Her sister who lives upstairs in the same building then told her about this fuckboy's tendencies. And come to find out he was cheating on her with two bitches. This bitch named Future and this bitch named Lala. Lala didn't know that he was, she was being cheated on. So she came and confronted China about it, basically telling her. The bitch, China, um, got a job. She got two kids. She's motivated, got a car. She got a good paying job. She d She's a woman, okay? But the other bitch, Future, lived in a hotel and ain't got shit. The only sh thing she got on her, so China says, is that she has no kids. First of all, that ain't nothing on you because she ain't got no kids. So fucking what? That bitch ain't got no kids. She She's a kid herself. And a bitch don't need no motherfucking kids. Because if she did have kids, I'd feel sorry for her. Living in a hotel... Now, the bitch Future, who China's boyfriend was cheating with, made it her business to move into an apartment finally, but in the building next door. And what does China's boyfriend do? He move out of her apartment and move into the bitch Future's apartment. But he still come over her house. And she loved him. But he also said, Future, the scallywag bitch, is what he wants. But China is what he needs. Because she motivates him and she supports him. Mm. So can y'all bitches figure that the fuck out? Because she, she stressed out and what should she fucking do? Bitch, what the fuck you think you should fucking do? Um, I'm sorry, but here's where you fucked up at. First of all, you let that bitch move the fuck next door. Let the bitch move next door. Go ahead, you little scallywag hoes. About time you got somewhere decent to fucking live. But second of all, that nigga was cheating on you. He would have been a dead issue a long time ago. I wouldn't give a fuck if he lived in a cardboard box. If you cheat on me, nigga, you are out the motherfucking door. And you better hope you get your shit. You better hope I give you your shit. And if I do throw it out, you better hope that it's in decent quality when you go through that shit. Now, second of all, when he moved out of your place, he went to that bitch house and then he's coming over your house. What the fuck is wrong with you? He's not really interested in you like that, sweetheart. Had he been interested in you like that, then he would have said it like this. You're what I want and you're what I need because you motivate me. Not she's what I want and you're what I need because you motivate me and support me. 
That's not what the fuck he would have said. He would have said, you're what I want and you're what I need. That's what the fuck. You would have been all of that. Not that bitch is that and this bitch is that. Really, China? Are you in a foreign fucking land? Your mind in a foreign country too? Because I'm... Maybe you need to get your passport and go back and find your motherfucking brain. Back to China and find and pick up your motherfucking brain cells. Because right now... You're not thinking straight. You are. You're right. You. That was one thing you said right. You are making excuses for him. Because he's a grown ass man. And okay. Being down and on hard times. You, may give you. May make you do some irrational decisions. Like uh, so we lost a job. I don't got no money. I might rob a bank. Or I might sell some pussy. Or I might sell some drugs. Either way, I'm going to do something irrational to make sure that ends me. Not fuck a bitch. Okay? That is not even in the same fucking category. Losing a job and fucking a bitch. How is fucking a bitch going to land you money in your pocket? And so what? He has a record. There are many people in this real world, like myself, that have a record and have landed a job. Okay? And yes, I have a record as well. And bitches, don't act like you or me. I, I'm the only one out here on YouTube land that ain't got that that got a record. Because I'm pretty sure some of y'all bitches that's watching got some type of fucking assault. Okay? So, yeah. I just don't have no patience for nobody. Okay? And if a bitch run her motherfucking mouth too much, or not even too much, I'm going a, I'm to a bust your motherfucking ass. So, yes, I have a record. A nice little lengthy record, but... I ain't do no real crimes. You know, I might have hit somebody up with the head and they had to go to the hospital, get some staples and shit, and bit, beat a bitch up on a police car. It's some shit like that. But like I said, I don't have the patience. But I still got a good job. I had a good job. I had plenty of jobs. You know what I'm saying? So you are making so much excuses for him, China. Like, so what's your excuse? That you're just dumb and, dumb and cute. And I'm not trying to disrespect, but I'm trying to get you to realize the real truth in the matter. The nigga is not interested in you. He like future. And from what it seems, that bitch is about to be his future. He got la la. What are these motherfucking celebrities and shit? Because I'm just trying to figure this out. As long as you allow this motherfucker, this dumb motherfucker. He ain't really that dumb. He's really not that dumb. He's smart because... He'd have left you and moved out and moved to the next bitch house and still come to see you. That nigga ain't stupid. He know what he need and where he could get it from. And he gonna go right back to it when he need it. So, I mean, he's not that stupid. But he's still fucking stupid. And you're falling right into the same category with him. You have two kids, a job, a car. Why are you so concerned about some lame-ass Negro? Like, this is the problem with females. They will put up with anything from a man because they want to have the right to say, I got a man or I got some dick. Like, let me tell you something, bitches. Okay, sex might be good. That's great. But what about your freaking pride? What about who you are as a person? You know what I'm saying? What about China? Who China stands for? You know what I'm saying? Your respect for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody wants to be in a relationship. But then when it comes to relationship, that relationship ain't worth shit. Y'all still want to be in it because you just want to be able to say, I got a man and or take fucking selfies with the motherfucker or lay down with him. Let me tell you something. Sometimes females need to take time to think for themselves, okay? Think for yourselves. Yeah, you jump out of one relationship into another. First of all, I'm never going to let no man disrespect me. Because if you want to cheat on me and you want to be with the next bitch, Negro, go, nigga, go ahead and be with the next fucking bitch. You really think I give a fuck, all right? I'm not going to let you disrespect me even if it ain't about no bitch. If you're doing some shady shit that I just don't fucking like, I'm not tolerating that shit. I'm just not because I know who the fuck I am and I'm not putting up with certain shit. And if I got to put up with certain shit that I don't like and to be in a relationship, Relationship, then I don't need to be in a fucking relationship because I'm not gonna allow anybody to stress me the fuck out anymore and just like China said she's stressed out bitch you stressed out because you letting yourself be stressed the fuck out worry about them two kids that you got how the fuck you gonna have your kids around some dumb lame ass Negro like that you know what I'm saying set an example for your children do you think it's alright for your children to meet people like that and then be around them like that like on some real shit some females worry so much about having a relationship they don't even give a 
a fuck about their kids enough. And I'm not saying that you're doing that, but as long as you allow this non-purpose nigga to be in your life and come when he pleases, then you're showing your kids that it's okay to have a non-purpose nigga. Because that's what we're going to fucking call it as. Not a fuck boy. A non-purpose nigga, okay? There's, they call non-purpose niggas. And... A lot of people may think that I bash men, but I don't bash them. I'm just being real. I've been through enough shit in my life to where I know that I don't have time for tolerance and bullshit in my life. If you want to act fucking stupid and you want to act up and you want to flex up and um, all of that shit and um, flex zone or all that, uh, uh, zone. a bitch like me is cutting your throat. Like when I say cut your throat, like goodbye, good fucking by Felicia. That's the shit that I be on. I'd rather be by myself than be stressed out by some motherfucking man. Not today, not tomorrow, not next week, not ever, okay? I'm 42 years old, about to be 42 years old. I have five kids and two grandchildren, which I am so proud of. And it is my life goal to make sure that my kids achieve everything that they need to achieve in life. And if I have to do that alone, then meaning by myself with no one, then that's fine. Because as long as my kids have grown and become grown men and women and have achieved what they need to achieve in life, then I am perfectly happy with that. I'm not worried about being in a relationship with somebody, especially if it's not a healthy relationship. You know what I'm saying? If it's not, that's fine. And sometimes we all have issues in a relationship, but I'm not about to let you disrespect me and move out of my apartment and then go to the next bitch apartment that you've been cheating with and then come over and see me like I'm some side chick. As long as you be the side chick piece of me, bitch, you're going to stay the side chick piece of me. So why don't you better yourself and look for better things better yet why don't you fucking relax and fucking leave the man alone and leave all men alone for a for a for a time frame for a for you know what i'm saying and get your shit together fucking search your soul some shit like that for real because it'd be like this when bitches have shit going on like this like they allowing men to do them like this you you seriously need to take the time the fuck out to search within and reach your soul and, and figure out what the fuck it is that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because if you allow some man to do you like this, there's a problem with yourself. I'm not about to let you move the fuck out of my house and move to that bitch house and then come see me. You out your fucking rabbit ass mind? Man, you better hope I don't see you and pop a cap in your ass when I do see you. You know what I'm saying? When shit like that boils down to it, you got issues, and you might have insecurities, but I'm going to tell you what, China, there's somebody for everybody the fuck out there, which means you don't have to settle for no fucking low-life scumbag because that's what you love. You love him? No, you love the fact that he was around. You don't even really know what love is. Have you done knowing what love the fuck is? Then you wouldn't be putting yourself in this predicament. Straight up, no chaser, just like that. So, for me... I'm going to tell you straight up like this, bitch, find yourself, find your soul, search within. Because if you are allowing someone like him to play on your intelligence and your emotions like that, then you got a serious problem and issues with yourself. The first thing you need to do is dump that zero. And the second thing you need to do is not get with the fucking hero, but dump that zero and search within yourself, okay, and find yourself. Fuck a man. Okay, worry about them two kids, and that's all I'm gonna say on that. All I'm gonna say on that. Okay, so this one here by um, we just gonna call um, she did not say she changed the names. Oh, she did. Okay, thank you for taking the time to read my email. I love your channel, by the way. My name is Ray, pronounced Ray. Um, and she changed the names already. So this is the name she changed it to. So my story is about having best friends in a relationship. I am currently in a long distance relationship going on five years th this December. I'm here in Pittsburgh and he's in Philly. Well, that's really not that far. I like a long distance relationship. Hmm. My boyfriend named Dom has a friend named Kiana that he considers to be his best friend. A while ago, before we got together, me and Dom, from my understanding, they wanted to try a relationship, meaning Dom and Kiana, which is his best friend. But their distance would not allow that to happen. Now, till this day, he considers her to be his best friend. Mind you, I don't like the whole having a best friend of the opposite sex thing in my relationship, as I stated plenty of times to him before. 
Previously, I seen a text in his phone from her that was locked. That said, I would fuck the shit out of you. Now, I confronted her and him about it, and they both claimed nothing was going on. So, being the person that I am, I forgave and forgot. Fast forwarding to currently, we had an argument because he still considered you to consider this girl his best friend. Am I tripping for feeling some type of way for him not to consider me as his best friend? I consider him mine, and I just don't find it fair that the feeling isn't mutual. He claims it's just a title. He knows. He now says he won't refer to her as, refer to her as his best friend for the respect of me and our relationship. Am I wrong for that? Am I tripping? What do you think, April? Well, Ray, first of all, you tripping because you forgave and forgot. If I would have seen some shit like that in somebody's goddamn text phone and that's supposed to be your best friend talking about I will fuck the shit out of you, I don't really take shit like that too lightly. And I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to agree with you on this. I really don't like that best friend shit, okay? Okay, that's supposed to be your man. He got her as his best friend. I understand y'all grew the fuck up and together and shit like that. But there comes a time and place when we all need to grow the fuck up and just continue to say we are friends. Don't get too closey, closey, too mushy, mushy. Because it's time to mature as an adult. But the shit that I'm trying to fester off of is did you find in their fucking phones I will fuck the shit out of you. And they kept it locked in the text message. Which means they wanted to keep that motherfucking text message and not let it delete like the rest of them. Why would you even want to keep some shit like that in the first place? So obviously it means something. Now I'm not really sure who said I will fuck the shit out of you. Did your boyfriend say it to her or did she say it to him? Either way, it's disrespectful, okay? And here's my thing. Are you guys getting along as a couple, meaning are you hanging out with this bitch Keanu who is your boyfriend's best friend? Are you guys hanging together? What I would do if I were you, and this might sound petty, cause, but sometimes I could be a petty bitch. I would investigate that bitch. Try to hang out with her and see what her fucking agenda, her hidden agenda is. Because bitches be having some hidden agendas. We all have some hidden agendas. Everybody in general has some fucking hidden agendas. And it may not even be a hidden agenda. It just may be I have an agenda to do some shit. Okay? And same situation, same, I had an agenda. The person that I'm with now, he had a girlfriend at the time, which is my son's father, and we were together at one time and place in life. And I was married to my husband, and he was with somebody else. And he would come over and see me because my husband wasn't around anymore. You know, he's in jail. And I knew he had a girl. My agenda was this. I'm going to get you from your fucking girlfriend. That was my fucking agenda, okay? And needless to say, I might have been a petty bitch about it, but fuck that. Fuck that bitch, okay? That was my motherfucking agenda, to get your motherfucking man. Okay, so, and yes, I can get petty too, just like the rest of y'all bitches. However, since they so best friends, my main thing is this. What y'all, why y'all so cool and closey, closey and what the fuck is this? Why is this message on lock? What the fuck is this? They claim it ain't nothing going on. If that's how you left it, where it's nothing going on, bitch, then you're crazy and you're fucking disturbed. I'm not about to let no shit like that. I'm going to fuck the shit out of you, fly by, and just think nothing of it. Like, seriously? Here's the thing. Get on some petty bitch shit. Get on some petty bitch shit. And come around. Come around her and him a lot more. Come around that bitch more. Invite her out to hang out and go shopping and have girls tea. Or whatever y'all bitches like to call it. I'm a hash of tea and all that. Go hang the fuck out with a bitch. And see what the fuck she really about. Because that's how you see a bitch. Open up to her but don't really open up to her. You know what I'm saying? Feel comfortable and loose but don't really feel comfortable and loose around the bitch. But be yourself. That's when, if you be yourself, bitches will open the fuck up. And they will be so fucking chillaxed. That they won't know what the fuck they doing on some real shit, and I promise you this much, okay? That's serious. Hang around the bitch and see what the fuck she about. Find out, hang out and chill with her. Be yourself. Relax and chill and just hang out with the bitch. You will find out more information than you think instead of just being a fucking grimy bitch bitch to her. If you being a bitch bitch and rah, 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 Fussing and fussing them both out. Bitch, you'll never find nothing to fuck out like that. Sometimes, <laughs> you gotta be real fucking conniving. 
Trust me. If you want to find out a person's agenda and who the fuck they really are and how they be lying and doing shit behind your fucking back, you got to play the role and just be cool. So my memory card got full, so this is over 45 minutes. But if you want to be, if you want to find out more information from bitches or anybody, you got to be conniving. And not even conniving, but you got to go with the flow. Be nice. Be chill with them. Don't start running off at the mouth. Rah, 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 rah. You did this, you did that. Just start asking questions. Trust me, bitches, it works all the fucking time. If you want to find out how grimy a motherfucker is, what the fuck they up to, okay, the shit that they be doing behind your back and shit like that, just bring up a scenario. You ain't got to fucking say it to the, like, you know what I'm saying? Bring up a scenario. Well, such and such had this issue. I'm telling you, and I'm probably a little tipsy. But it works all the time. Be nice to a motherfucker. The nicer you are to a motherfucker, the more information your asses will find the fuck out. If you coming out and running your mouth and cussing somebody the fuck out, do you really think they're going to want to give you any information on what the fuck they doing with your man? Okay? Really? Like, I'm sorry, but if you cussing me the fuck out, I'm not about to tell you nothing about why the fuck I wrote, yeah, I want to fuck the shit out of you. Or I'm going to fuck the shit up. I'm not going to tell you no shit like that. I'm going to just fucking tell you to fuck off and go fuck yourself, okay? However, if you get in good with the person, you get to be friends and nicey-nice with them, bitch, you will find out so much shit that you didn't fucking know. You will slap yourself and your mama at the same motherfucking time, okay? Trust the bitch when I tell you. I've had to do this several times, okay? And like I said, I'm damn near 42 years old. I ain't got no time for nobody's bullshit in games. At all. Best friends, you're not tripping. Because, I'm... I mean, it all depends on how they act around each other. If they acting kind of weird and writing that type of stuff, I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you, that's kind of weird. Then you need to fucking second guess it. But if they like little kids, they best friends, they've been little friends, best friends as little kids, and they just cool with each other, then that's okay. But when you see a weirded shit like that, then you need to second guess that shit. Like, um, what the fuck is you doing with Kiana? Like, on some real shit, Dom. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And just play it. But sometimes, as much as you want to fucking spaz the fuck out, you can't spaz the fuck out. There have been many times that I wanted to bust up in the motherfucking room and be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Trust me. I don't have patience, and my composure is not that fucking good, all right? So I try, I try so hard my best to fucking keep my composure to get information that I want to get out of a person by being humble and keeping my composure. But sometimes April don't have that fucking, I just don't have it in me. And my fucking better half, which is my other side, gets the best of me, okay? I call it my better half because that's the side of me that's not about to let me be played in no fucking circumstances ever. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you got to play nicey-nicey to get the information you want. So when you ask, are you tripping? No, you're not tripping because that's his best friend. You could be tripping and you could not be tripping. I think you fucking tripping because you forgave and forgot about the fucking text message that was locked and said, I would fuck the shit out of you. That's where I think you fucking tripping. If I was right there next to you right now, girl, I would knock you upside your head, Ray. That's just all I'm saying. Okay? So, what do you guys think about best friends being the opposite sex and then they're in relation and then you're in a relationship with this guy and he has a best a girl as a best friend and they just, like what what would you do? What is your take on that? Like me, I'm very I'm very aggressive. I'm a very aggressive person, so I don't really know how I would take that. I probably would spaz the fuck out on somebody and it would be like all hell. Like, bitch don't come around my motherfucking house. Bitch stay the fuck away from my man. That's how I would feel. And that's probably not right, but I'm just being honest and I'm being real. This is how I would take it. So, give Ray your personal opinion on what you would do in this case scenario. If your man had a best friend and she was female and you saw some shit on his fucking text message that was locked that said, I'm going to fuck the shit out of you. What, what would you do? I'm going to fuck the shit out of you. I don't think anybody would have a phone. 
there probably wouldn't be nobody living. But you know what? And even though I say there probably wouldn't be no phone, there wouldn't be nobody living, you know what I would do? When this is my thing, because I'm older now, I'm not like into all that drama. Like, we can have drama if you want it. Like, if you want to bring that shit, bitches, niggas, we can have dramas. Because I'm not one like. I'm not a fucking chump, but if you keep running off at the pussy, running off at the mouth, there's going to be some bullshit to pop off. However, if a nigga is cheating on you, the best thing you can serve him is a dish of fuck off, okay? Serve that nigga a dish of fuck off. If he doing some fuck boy shit, you know what I'm saying, some non-purpose nigga shit, serve him a dish of fuck off, meaning, okay nigga, you fucked me over. Whatever, I'm going to ignore you and I'm going to just say goodbye. Because when you fucking feed into that shit and constantly arguing back and forth with them, they just getting you to where you where they want you to be. So, a person hates to be ignored. And a person hates for the other person to just not argue with them and just totally shut them out. I know I hate that. So, when you do some fuck shit to me, I totally dead you. I don't fucking pay you no mind. I don't talk to you. I don't fucking consider you there, I don't recognize you, this is me, I don't bother. And that annoys a person more than you arguing with them. Because if you're arguing with them, you're giving them attention and you're feeding into their bullshit. So the best thing that you can do, and sometimes it's hard for a lot of people to just walk away from the situation, but for me it's not anymore because I'm 42 damn near years old and I've been through enough. If nigga, if you wanna cheat or if you wanna do some fuck shit, some fuck shit to me, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna serve you a, t a fucking nice glass of here you go, okay? Because you want to act like a fuck boy, and I'm going to be real nice to you. And then in the back of your mind, you're going to wonder, why the fuck is this bitch being so nice? Because, nigga, I'm going to kill you with niceness, and it's going to fucking scare you away. And on top of that, I don't have time to stress myself out about you, okay? Don't have time to stress myself out about you at all. I'm going to fucking ignore you, and then I'm going to be gone and done with you. And niggas hate that. Bitches hate that. Nobody likes to be ignored. You know what I'm saying? Nobody likes to be ignored. So the best thing you can do is fucking give them a dish of ignorance. Okay, if that's even a motherfucking word, ignorance. Don't combat with them. Leave it the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? Leave it the fuck alone. There have been lots of motherfucking situations that I've had in my lifetime, currently and past, where I had to ignore a motherfucker or just say deuces. You know what I'm saying? And then that makes them wonder, like, did this bitch even give a fuck? Keep wondering. Keep motherfucking wondering. You know what I'm saying? So being that this video is so freaking long and I had to change my memory card to, to finish the third video, we're going to just go into the fourth one and do this one here because it's only 2.19 in the afternoon. And of course, I have to get my kids in the hour, but we have more than enough time to do a fourth video. So this one here, she, it looks like she actually sent this to me on July the 2nd of 2015. Then she resent it to me again on April 1st. So I'm going to just read it. Hi, April. I'm one of your longtime fans since 2009. I'm in a situation that I really need your take on. Getting right to it. I'm married 25 years plus. Oh, I'm married 25 plus years to a man who has simply lost interest in life. Everything I've tried failed. You name it. I've tried it. Since his father and then mother passed on within a few years of each other, my husband seems to have dropped out of life. He's not interested in family, get-togethers, social events, one-on-one, one-on-ones, he and me. Time. Nothing except getting up every day to go to work, come home, eat, watch TV, and sleep. That's it. It has been building like this for six years i j just last year i moved into one of the spare bedrooms oh wow we live our lives as though we're roommates we stopped having intimacy in 2008 he began experiencing erectile dysfunction about the same time which i deduced was the reason for the lack of intimacy intimacy okay y'all see i had enough to drink i didn't push the issue since it, it seemed a sensitive subject I just stood by him patiently, hoping he would come to terms with it or figure something out. April, it's quickly approaching year seven of the same thing. Nothing. Our children are grown with families and lives on their own. The only thing between us besides our last name is a home we purchased 25 years ago. I love him, but I am not in love with him anymore. I know somewhere along the way of our estrangement, the deep, passionate love I once felt for him died. And I can't help but think it's the same for him. 
If I try to talk with him about how I feel, he pushes me away, acts as if I'm interrupting a good football game on TV. He says to me, find a boyfriend and leave me alone. I am done trying. I have no evidence that he's cheating. And believe me, I've checked. I'm tired of being and feeling alone and lonely. I'm only 56 and not ready to give up on life as he has. I am now thinking about divorce. What should I do? I don't care if you use my real name or you can use Thunderheart. Your choice. Wow. So... That was a really, that was kind of touchy to me because, first of all, she just made me cry with that, but it's so sad when you have a relationship with somebody for so long and you just try so hard and so hard and like the other person just doesn't want to try. And just like he's saying to her, go find a boyfriend, that hurts. And Though I've never heard anybody say that to me, just go find a boyfriend and leave me alone. Like, how could you be so cruel to someone who has been there for you, has held you down, is your life partner? How could you treat them like that? Like, on some real shit? Like, really? Whew. How could you treat them like that? Like, if someone was to say to me, um, go find a boyfriend, leave me alone. I think that I would just pounce on him like a tiger on an elk out the jungle and fucking snap his fucking neck. Because how dare you say something like that to her? Like, go find a boyfriend, leave you alone. Like, motherfucker, I could leave you alone. Like, on some real shit, I would leave you alone. You know what? Um, Jay, Thunderheart. I wouldn't even keep trying no more. Because sometimes... Your trying is not everybody else's concern. Like on some real shit. Like if he is being so rude and you're trying to have a mutual conversation with him and just talk about your lives together because you've been together for so long and he's telling you to go find a boyfriend, leave him alone. You know what you should do? Fuck go find a boyfriend. Go find your life and go find your life back. You know what I'm saying? Life is too short. You're 56 years old. You still have a lot of life left in you where you can find someone that will treat you like golden. And unfortunately, of course, you're going to have to walk away from what you did have, that you've had for so long. But a lot of people put emphasis on like, well, we got kids together. We've been so long. We've been together for so long. I'm just going to stick it out. Why the fuck stick out something with anybody that makes you fucking miserable? Like on some real shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, just like me and my ex. We was together for 17 years. And that's a long time, too. You know what I'm saying? But if you make me fucking miserable, I'm not sticking that shit out the fuck with you. You out your fucking rabbit ass mind. You're not about to keep making me miserable for the rest of my life. And, yeah, sex and intimacy is not everything. But intimacy can mean a whole lot more than just intercourse. Meaning just the words I love you and spending time and holding hands, walking through the grocery store holding hands, walking through Walmart, through the park, wherever, through the mall holding hands. That's intimate stuff. That's time. Me and you time. That is time. You know what I'm saying? That is fucking time. And if you cannot give me that and you don't want to and you're telling me to go find a boyfriend and leave you alone, then what is it even worth? I understand a lot of people go through a lot of shit in life and maybe he's depressed and maybe he needs to to go seek counseling you know what I'm saying because his mother and father died okay I get it I fucking get it I'm not gonna say I get it because like that because my mom and my dad are still alive but I'm pretty sure if my mom and my dad died a year apart I would be fucked up emotionally however seven years have gone by nigga get your fucking life and get off your high horse and get it together stop treating the ones that love you dearly like shit because you know what if he's not cheating and he's just so in a depressed mood because he has erectile dysfunction or whatever the fuck you want to call there's fucking pills for that shit that can fucking correct that shit and you'll be good for a minute you know what i'm saying there's a lot of things about myself that i'm not happy about but do you see me letting it depress me and you know something i used to like with my teeth I would watch all these fucking reality shows and TV shows like, oh my God, they got the perfect teeth. And my teeth used to be perfect. When I say used to be, they used to be perfect to where they were all lined up perfectly, no gaps or nothing, until I got my wisdom teeth pulled and then they started spreading. 
And it bothers me because I hear little people saying, and when I say little people, because that's what the fuck you are to me if you're talking some shit about me. I hear little people talking shit, talking about my teeth, or not only that, but the scar on my chest, which is right here. That bothered me, which was a pimple, and now it's... And I wake up in the middle of the night, and it hurts, and it stings, and it's sharp full. It's like a dagger in my chest sometimes, and that hurts. You know what I'm saying? There's really nothing I can do about it because it's overgrowth skin tissue. It's an overgrowth of skin tissue that my body forms. And unfortunately, there's nothing that they can do about it. But, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people go through a lot of different things in life. And yeah, we be down for a minute. But we have to get ourselves and kick ourselves back up. And I had to kick myself up like, you know what? I am not about to go spend tens and thousands, ten thousand dollars on to get my teeth fixed. This is who I am. And if nobody on YouTube don't like it, so fucking what? You think I give a fuck if y'all don't like my teeth? No, I don't. I really don't. And if y'all don't like my scar, you know what I'm saying, that I've tried to go ahead and get removed but doesn't work, then I don't give a fuck. I don't really care if nobody likes what I ain't got going on. If my, my dick game in the bed, I ain't got no dick, but I'm just saying. If your dick game in the bed ain't all that, I don't give a fuck. Because there's so much more to life than fucking superficial, materialistic, outside shit. You know what I'm saying? And if you, Thunder, um, Thunderheart, are trying to give him your all and he's not accepting it, then unfortunately, you need to move on and make yourself happy. It's bad when someone says, go find a boyfriend. That was, that part really hurt me. Just hearing, just reading that. And normally, I, n never in my life have I read a real talk and cried, but that really hurt because I've never had anybody say that to me. But you know what I'm saying? We all go through our things in relationships and it be hurt. It be hurtful too. And so, you know what I'm saying? And it's not even a drinking because that was just one cup. That's my first cup. A bitch can drink. Um, but. It's just the fact that you've been there and he just really don't acknowledge the shit. And for someone to say, go find a boyfriend and leave me alone, that's just so heart hurting. It's so hurting. And, like, I've been through a lot in my time. In my little short life of 41, 42 years, I've been through a lot. And that's why I say to you girls all the time, like, if you're in a relationship and it's not worth it and they're not treating you right and you're stressing you out, then get out of that relationship and find yourselves. Don't jump into another relationship. Make yourself happy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was so miserable in my marriage and I stuck it out for my kids. You know what I'm saying? And when I got out and got away and moved all the way to this side, I was so happy. Like, totally happy. And... It was like two and a half years of being alone, but that was like the best two and a half years of my life. Like, really? It really, really was because I got to find out who April really is and I got to focus more on me. And sometimes we just got to take time for ourselves and just be who we are and not worry about being with anybody. And yeah, nobody wants to be alone and everybody wants to be in a relationship because nobody wants to be alone. But I tell you what, if I have more sanity being alone, then... I'd rather have more sanity being alone. You know what I'm saying? So, Thunderheart. Um, maybe it's time to walk away. And even though you have had some years of this relationship with him, those are years of love which you can never get back or never take back. And just think of it as a blessing. And then continue on with your journey. Because sometimes we're put in situations and relationships for a reason. We may not know what they are. But it may be able to help the person. And maybe you leaving may be able to help him even more. And whether you want to think so or not, you know what I'm saying, you being there and always being there for him and helping him, that might be a stagnant to him. So maybe you walking away and enjoying your life may be more helpful to him than you know. So on that note, I hope you girls enjoyed this video of me rambling off at the fucking mouth. And as always, stay diva and divalicious. Oh, I hope I didn't ruin my makeup. And I will see you girls on my next video.